Number 11. Calculate the moment of inertia of a skater given the following information. Letter A. The 60 kilogram skater is approximated as a cylinder that has a 0.11 meter radius. All right. Um, so I drew a little picture. Right? The skater's body is going to be approximated uh, via a cylinder. The axis of rotation, right, she's spinning around, so the axis of rotation will be right down the center of that cylinder. And the radius from the axis of rotation here to the uh, periphery, right, the, uh, the uh, side portion of her body is going to be 0 0.11 meters. And her weight, or I shouldn't say her weight, her mass is 60 kilograms. So if you reference page three, six, no, 359, I think it is, um, in your text, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of pictures there with rota you know with different figures and it gives you all of the rotational inertias all right now i selected two that will be important in this problem and for the first part letter a only this part is important okay on the upper right hand side over here so to find the moment of inertia of this particular system you're going to look for the cylinder that is rotating about a center axis has a certain radius value to it and a mass okay so this should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to write the formula down here. It tells us that the moment of inertia for this rotating body is going to be the mass of the object multiplied by the radius squared all over 2. So the mass is 60 kilograms. The, ro uh, the radius is 0.11 squared. And then just divide that by 2. So plug it into the calculator. We get 60 times 0.11 squared divided by 2. So 0. 0 0.3. 363. And uh, yeah, we'll do three sig figs. So 363. Three. And the units here, you can always reference the formula, right? Uh, mass is in kilograms, radius in meters. So therefore, right, this should be kilogram uh, meter squared. Okay. Straightforward. All right. Part B. So it says the skater with arms extended now is approximately a cylinder that is 52.5 kilograms, which has the same radius of 0.11 meters, and has two 0.9 meter long arms, which are 3.75 kilograms each, and extend straight out from the cylinder like rods rotated about their ends. All right, so the key word I think, uh, I mean, there's a lot of keywords, but the key word in order to understand what picture we should choose and how we should kind of draw this thing out is this, that their rods rotated about their ends. So if you go to that page, 359 in your text, and you look for a rod rotated about an end, about its end, you'd come up to this picture, all right? You'd come upon that picture. Now, um... This picture is now telling us that here's the axis of rotation. It's at the end of the rod, okay? And in order to calculate the moment of inertia for this particular rotating body, we would take the mass, multiply it by the length of that rod squared, and then just divide it by three, okay? So that's easy. So we know how to do each arm then, right? So the arm in this picture is going to, if you notice how it's drawn, it's going to extend to the center of the axis of rotation. Why am I drawing it that way? Because that's what basically the problem was saying, that it's rods rotated about their ends. So if the cylinder is spinning right about the center axis of rotation, and, I'm all, and they're also telling me that I have two rods that are approximating her arms that are rotating about their ends, I have to draw the arm to look like this, where it goes right to the axis of rotation. All right, so this total length here is gonna be 0.9 meters, and the total weight of that arm is gonna be 3.75. Now, to find the total moment of inertia of this system, it's basically similar to you know mass, right? Inertia is like the analog to, to mass. So if you wanted to find the total inertia of this system, Okay, I'll write something like this, that the sum of the inertias will equal the inertia of the first piece plus the inertia of the second piece plus the inertia of the third piece, right? Dot, 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 dot. Okay, so you could have a bunch of, you know, different types of figures and rotating bodies. Just look at them each individually. Calculate their moments, or I, I should say calculate their um, inertias separately and then just add them together. That's it. So how many pieces to this puzzle do we have? 
we have one cylinder that's rotating and we have two arms that are rotating. And therefore, we have three pieces. You might say, well, there's symmetry here and these are basically the same thing, just, um, you know, so we have two uh, pieces if you want. I mean, yeah, we can, you know, algebraically combine things, but it doesn't matter. We're both going to arrive at the same answer. So I'm just going to look at it as three separate pieces, okay? So I'll say that the the sum of all the inertias here is going to be the first one I'm going to do is the cylinder, all right, the, cyl uh, the cylindrical piece. So actually, let me do this. I of the cylinder plus I of, I'll call it arm one plus I of R, uh, arm two. Okay, that's basically now my formula. So I'm running out of space here. Let me just move this up a little bit. Okay, I'll draw like a little line so we separate some of the work from the picture. So now just start expanding on the eyes. So the moment, or I should say the inertia of the cylinder was approximated, or not approximated, but given by this formula up here on the right. Okay, so that is the mass of the cylinder multiplied by the radius of the cylinder squared divided by two. Next, I have then the inertia of the arm here rotating about its end. So that is now given to me via this formula right here. Okay, so to calculate the inertia of this arm, I would have to take, as the formula is telling me up here, I would have to take the mass of the arm, multiply it by the length of the rod squared and divide it by three. And then obviously I have another arm, right? Um, so we just have to do it again. So we'd have ML squared over three as well. Now, obviously you can see here, you have two of the same thing, right? So I could just, you know, take two and multiply it by this thing and then cancel that out. That's what I meant before by you might say to yourself, well, there's only two pieces. I mean, it doesn't matter how you do it. Now all we have to do is just plug in the values, right? So remember, consider each piece separately. So the cylinder, they told us that now the mass of this cylinder that's rotating is going to be 52.5. Why is it less than the 60? Well, because now her arms are extended, so we have to treat them as separate pieces in relation to the cylinder, okay? So that being said, um, the mass of the cylinder that's rotating now is 52.5. Hold on, 52.5. Multiplied by the radius, if that's the same, that didn't change. It told us 0.11 squared, all divided by two. Then plus the second, now the uh, second piece of the puzzle, which was the arm one, we'll call it, right? So the mass of that arm is 3.75 kilograms. The uh, length now of the arm, as it details in the picture over here, you see the length is the total length of the rod, all right? Not the radius, it's the length from the tip all the way to the end of where it's rotating. That length is gonna be 0 0.900 squared, okay? And then, the, and then just divide that by three. And similarly, I'll write it again, okay? You could just take that value though, obviously, and multiply it by two, doesn't matter. So 0 0.900 squared, all divided by three, running out of space, and let's calculate, all right? So 3.75 times 0.9 squared divided by three. I'm actually going to, my calculator, multiply it by two, all right? And then I'm going to add to that the 52.5 times 0.11 squared, all divided by two. So we get 2.34. All right, so I'll put it up here now. So the I of the, the total system is going to be 2.34. So we have 2.34. And that will be, uh, again, the units here, right? Same kilogram meter squared. All right. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Definitely helps us out tremendously. We would uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. Tell your friends. All right, we'd love to uh, help them out as well. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.